everybody we are back and this is the event today we are really excited because we are at a very special venue for part three of our body talks today we are here joining us is sarah may and this is the mia l brand and their studio What I want to know is what is the Me brand and why is this brand on our platforms today? Me brand is supposed to be a woman empowerment brand, something that every woman can relate to. So that's the whole point of us kind of um, putting it into a, an acronym of ME from Yao. I started off with my photography uh, eight years ago and um, from there kind of just developed and started interacting with women all the time, grew into something where I could identify the issues and the things that people weren't talking about, the way that they weren't addressing the issues within themselves, and I needed to address that. So it kind of grew from there, and we were discussing some about the whole name and stuff like that, so I, I never named it after me, because it's never about me. <laughs> I don't like being the center of attention, oddly. Um, <laughs> but so changing that the name to something else meant that I could own it a little bit better. Um, and the name in itself is made up of my kids' names. Um, my oldest daughter's name is Mia, and my son and my youngest daughter is Levi and Alexa. And I've combined it all together oh, wow. to Mia Al. Nice. And, um, thank you. Mia in Italian means mine, and Al uh, in French means femininity. Oh, so wow. together it means my femininity. So it was wow. something that was very thought through. Yes. <laughs> and, very um, clever. Very, very clever. It's something that every woman can relate to at the end yeah. of the day. When you are looking at Mia Al, when you are part of me, you should feel feminine, whatever that definition is mm. for you. Oh my gosh, I love that so, so, so much. Amazing. Thank you. How did you take photography and a woman and her body to do boudoir? How, how did that come about as a photographer to where you are now? And why did you choose boudoir photography? Mm. It's, pretty, it's pretty much the only photography I've ever done. <laughs> um, it's the only thing that you chose to start. Because <laughs> I just took it off. You know? um, no, I feel, so when I started, it was actually one of my friends was getting engaged and um, she was like, oh, I saw these pictures and I really think it's a nice idea. So I said, okay, you know, just jump in, take a couple of pictures. And her response to that when she saw them was just so overwhelming. It's an addictive feeling. It's not actually something I can explain mm -hmm. without physically doing it. Mm -hmm. So there's even a different feeling from when you're on that side of the camera to when you're taking the pictures. Knowing that I've done something and you as a woman feel just this so next happy. sense of... Mm -hmm. of wow, that's me, and you take that further. You've kind of played a part in that person's journey, you know. Uh, wherever you go, you're going to remember that, and somehow the brand is going to stick with you. And I remember when I did this, or I became this, even if it was just 1% of where, you've, where you're where you going, yeah. then that becomes a part of it. So, um, yeah, I just loved the, the feeling of that. I loved how women kind of, like, reacted to that mm -hmm. and wanted to pursue it. It was just... No, nothing else I wanted to do. Lovely. 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 So, so. Okay, so by show of hands, who has ever done a boudoir? Ah, me too. <laughs> Can we? Looks Mitch? like I need to do one. <laughs> so, truth be told, I haven't done a proper boudoir photo shoot. I did a boudoir photo shoot when Madeleine decided uh. she was going to try this photography thing yes. out. And I got all dressed up and I put my makeup on. I don't know how good that was because I found out I was pregnant on that the same day. <laughs> I was my eyes out. <laughs> yes. So, see, I also have a memory of a lasting impression. <laughs> <laughs> was the last time I'd be able to wear those sexy underwear <laughs> and feel beautiful before my tummy went. <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, it was disastrous, by the way. <laughs> not all of them. Yeah, not Some all of them. Very so, cool. maybe I should ask, seeing as I've never done one, for those ladies that haven't done something like that and maybe feel like, oh, I don't know if I could do something like that, what advice could you give somebody? The first question would be, why don't you want to do it? So you, it could sometimes be obvious, right? You think to yourself, oh, I, you know, I don't look like that, mm -hmm. whatever that is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. We always put up uh, these pictures of like Victoria's Secret in my head. Mm -hmm. like, you can only be in underwear if mm -hmm. you look like this or you can only be naked if you look like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And so... Even when somebody comes to me and they say that they want to do it, they come, but, I've, but I'm, you know, I have but. this, or I'm, mm. but. There's always but. Mm. 
theory have I ever had one person, including like the skinniest person ever, come to me and be like, oh, I want to do this and I feel fantastic and I want to do it because I feel great. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, most people do it because they want to. Mm -hmm. So I would always say to somebody who wants to do it, do it because you want to feel better about yourself, not because you already do. That's If you do, that's fantastic. I mean, mm -hmm. Props. <laughs> that's amazing. But. I think the thing about women is that we're just so scared to be vulnerable. Mm. I mean, we're scared to have vulnerable conversations. We're scared to be vulnerable in front of the camera, in front of our friends. But once we embrace that vulnerability, I think mm. that's when personal growth really happens, when you can really step forward mm. to accepting yourself for who yeah. you are, whatever that beautiful body looks or means to you. Mm. And also, everyone's always going on about the perfect body shape. Mm. But what is the perfect body shape? Mm -hmm. What what body shape is there is no perfect body shape, you know? And Essentially your body is just a container to your personality. Yes, exactly. Hmm. So tell me, um, what is your definition of body beautiful? I think the the world only wants you to have one answer, right? If you think about it. We say body beautiful, everyone's supposed to jump on board and be like Everybody, everybody is beautiful just like you are. And yeah, 100%, everyone's got something beautiful about them. But the job that you have in terms of finding what is body beautiful is what is beautiful individually, not what is the standard for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because we can say, what, what is body beautiful? And your version is going to be different to mine. We're all going to have different versions. In terms of body beautiful, I feel like the only answer is finding what that is for you as an individual. Because else, uh, you're only ever going to compare yourself to somebody else. And when you stop doing it, that's when you're going to find what's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. I really like that. And we have daughters, uh, except for Michelle. But <laughs> she's got to have a... I'm going to have a niece. At least. At least two. <laughs> so that counts because nieces are like daughters anyway. But what advice could you give us as moms of how we could speak to our daughters differently so that when they do get to our age that they might feel better about themselves or accept themselves is there any advice you have for us about how we could speak to our kids oh yeah there's a lot of this is concerned so i obviously have my own daughters as well and one of the things that over time as they're getting older my daughter's 15 my oldest daughter now she'll be 15 this year and you start to notice a lot of things that you as a woman could relate to when you were that age mm. So it brings to light a lot of things that you as an adult haven't dealt with yet. Mm -hmm. And I would always say start there. The things that you've learned through your process of speaking to other women or the things that you've learned um, from dealing with body issues is being able to take that and being honest with them about that. Starting with this. So, for example, I'll ask Mia as my oldest daughter and she is super tall. She's like two heads taller than me. Really. She's Wow. Very tall, and um, so, but come with with that means she's a little bit bigger boned. Mm -hmm. So for her, knowing when I mean when I was much younger, I was doing my thing. I was like forty kgs, tiny, but make it's not good. No, no. <laughs> um, very very small and like t petite size twenty eight when I was nineteen or twenty years old. So at fifteen, she's going, why am I wearing a size medium? This mm -hmm. must mean something's wrong with me. All the mm -hmm. girls, oh, I need to be skinny. I need to do this. I need to do that. So starting there where you can go, I know what it feels like to have felt like that, even at my size difference. Mm. Where am I going to now show that there's, you can relate? You need to show them that you can relate. Did you explain to her what you went through as a teenager? 100%. With your being bulimic? 100%. And I have done that. I feel like it's incredibly important for us to be able to get them to understand certain things and heal See, we need to be a generation now. This is part of what my brand is about. Mm -hmm. It's becoming a generation of women who are healing from the things that we weren't allowed to heal from as kids. Or our mm -hmm. parents didn't know better. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Most of our moms never went for therapy when they needed it. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of had to deal with certain things differently. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us have that resource now. Mm -hmm. So our kids are receiving a different side of us. And so where we're healing now, where we're able to take that further um, and learn better. We need to pass that on so that when they get to our age, they're not dealing with the things we're dealing with now. Mm -hmm. So we have to address these things. And a lot of us, I don't know about you guys, but I've, I, with a lot of women that I deal with, have a thing of, but my mom didn't do it like this. And so you sit with this guilt like, I, I want to do it mm -hmm. differently, yeah. but, you know, I, I, I'm, I feel like this is a better way of doing it, but my mom didn't do it like mm -hmm. this. Maybe I'm doing yeah. it wrong. But the world has changed. Our girls need us. And it's not to say that our parents did a bad job. They were just in a different world. Yeah. And so yeah. we have to take what we're learning now and 
keep educating ourselves and keep passing that on. By the time they're our age, and their kids are not going to have to go through their yeah. goals, won't be going through the things that we are now using. Look, I'm, I'm saying goals, but I think that there's a really big struggle for men as well mm. that have have lost who who they are allowed to be yeah. because I believe that the generations of fathers are very this is how you are going to be raised to be a good mm -hmm. grown man, man one day. But what about them being secure about saying, I want to explore possibilities within myself, become beach vibey or hippie or so I find it refreshing that it has opened up now so that we are and boys are allowed to grow their hair and you know wear different clothing than dance <clears throat> dance yes and find ways to express themselves so it's important for for the boys to accept who they are mm -hmm. as much as it is for the girls mm -hmm. yeah I think as women we kind of need that yeah yes so we're so maybe I should bring my husband to come and do a good walk. <laughs> 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 that should be picture. <laughs> my love. Yes, we're with. <laughs> oh, I could just picture him with the cigar. <laughs> He'll just have his middle finger. <laughs> with his cigar. <laughs> yeah, that was so cool. <laughs> now tell me, with <clears throat> posing, women posing for photos, a lot of us don't feel confident with the way we look. I know I don't. I am not comfortable in my own skin. I always criticize myself. It's, it's come from when I was a child, bulimic, not eating, modeling, you know, been there, done that, done all of that stuff. And no matter what I do, I feel like I can never look nice in a photo. Is there certain positions that we can stand in to feel more comfortable in front of the camera and look better? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so show us. Just, the, you don't have to stand up, but like one or two, how we can give us some tips, give our viewers and our listeners some tips about posing mm -hmm. and how what makes you feel or makes you look better on the other side. So posing in its entirety, let's remember, is subjective. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all look different already, so the same pose is not going to work for everybody. Mm -hmm. As long as you remember that, the basic stuff like just lifting up your chin when you're doing things, creating your posture makes a huge difference in the way that you do it, the way that you do things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think oh, about it now, yeah. how many times have you accidentally turned your camera around while you've been oh, turning yeah. on your phone? Yeah. And you're yes. like, why is this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that's like catching yourself like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is what I look like. This is what other people see. <laughs> <laughs> you see, now, now you're like slouching down and doing this thing. Now, just simple simple moves like that can, can change everything. Things like when we're sitting down, crossing your ankles versus like chilling mm -hmm. with your legs. You can't do that. But you, <laughs> you, know, you want to feel a little bit better. Cross your ankles, arch your back, chin up. It's a simple. Okay. Some things, yeah. Point your toes, arch your back, lift your chin. Practice that a little bit. <laughs> Actually, with the star status thing, the uh, photographer that was giving us some posing said, push your chin forward. It might feel funny, but like push your chin forward. That makes my back sore. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have to practice these yeah, poses yeah, we're gonna have to. a little bit. We'll, we'll take some photos and we'll post them, even though they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of tutorials on my platform as well. That's awesome. Something that I, I do. Know that. Yeah, we do uh, uh, different tutorials just to show people Lovely. how to pose. Thank you so much for always tuning in and listening to our podcast. We are all about empowering women, and we are really excited to be sharing our next podcast with you. Stay tuned to our social medias and don't forget to follow us. We are The Vent Essay, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.